and then I got home and I could like still kind of smell him like on my upper lip. And I was like, <laughs> Some girls want to take your sweatshirt. Raina just wants you to linger on her upper lip. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Girls Gotta Eat. <laughs> Welcome back. We're on YouTube. We're on YouTube. Welcome. I... Don't know where to look. <laughs> I don't either. It's been four and a half years, and we're just now getting on this huge platform Ever for heard podcasting. Of it? <laughs> Ever heard of it? Well, actually, listen, we did get on. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'm Ashley. <laughs> I'm Raina, and this is a comedy podcast about sex, dating, and relationships. This is Azul. Oh, this is Azul. If you guys are watching, if you're listening, whatever this is, my dog. He is the the house dog, the girls gotta eat mascot. Azul. He well, you should you should watch YouTube and you should take a look if you don't know what he looks like. But he is a sweet little rescue. We've had him in our lives since April of 2021. So anyway, uh, this is the three of us. Girls gotta eat. If you're new here, welcome. If you're hate watching, hate listening, welcome twice because you're listening twice. And uh, let's. <laughs> Let's just thank some of our partners and get into it. Yeah, let's do this. Okay, let me reach my teleprompter. Um, <laughs> we have some great partners. So thanks to Rocket Money for supporting Girls Gotta Eat. What's Rocket Money? It helps you with lowering bills, canceling subscriptions, and more. Get rid of unnecessary subscriptions with Rocket Money now. Go to rocketmoney.com slash GGE. And thanks to Nutrafol for supporting Girls Gotta Eat. It's time to join the thousands of women standing up for their strands. You can grow thicker, healthier hair at Nutrafol.com slash GGE to save $15 off your first month subscription plus free shipping on every order. Thanks to Daily Harvest for supporting Girls Gotta Eat. Daily Harvest delivers delicious harvest bowls, soups, flatbreads, snacks, smoothies, and lattes, all built on organic fruits and veggies. Go to dailyharvest.com slash GGE to get up to $40 off your first box. And thanks to Hello Tushy for supporting Girls Gotta Eat. Make the restroom your best room with the complete Tushy system, including the Tushy bidet attachment, ottoman, toilet brush, and Tushy stand and tissues. Get 10% off plus free shipping at hellotushy.com slash GGE. We're going to bring the Tushy out later and do an act out on oh yeah on, now that we're on video <laughs> I'm actually, I'm, <laughs> we're gonna waterboard the camera <laughs> we're gonna spray it right at the camera you the, can watch acting, actually take it in her butt <laughs> yes we're, we're not me <laughs> we're we're acting out all that i'm gonna make a smoothie <laughs> you can watch me Raina's take my neutral full <laughs> pills and manage my money on an app <laughs> uh, but we are so excited to do this because we've been doing clips, obviously, of the podcast for so many years, and you guys have wanted to watch the full episodes. So that's available to you now. Um, yeah. We're going to be releasing full episodes on YouTube from now on, um, and it'll be available to you every week. Yeah. That's it. We're okay. Excited. What else? Okay. So we announced our holiday show last week, and I would assume that it is sold out at this point point in time. So we will be at the Apollo Theater on December 15th. And if you guys got tickets, thank you. Uh, and we might add another show. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Stay tuned. And we will be announcing our 2023 tour coming soon. Uh, a few things just for me, if you want to come see me do stand up, I have shows in Nashville that's almost sold out on November 10th and Atlanta, November 13th. Get those tickets, theater show. It's going to be so fun. It's going to be so wild. It's going to be such a blast. Uh, and I have done for two, but that's been sold out for a minute now. So you can do that at my website, ashhess.com. Yeah. And if you're new here, the website has every episode we've ever done. So you can search all the different titles, merch, things like that. So thank you for being here. You went back to your alma mater this weekend. Yeah, I did go. I went to Clemson uh, for the, I hadn't been, that's where I went to school. So I hadn't been there since 2015. And I've seen my group of girlfriends. There's like seven from like the core group that were all still friends, like best friends from college. And I'd seen them. I've seen them over the years. You've met all of them, but we hadn't all been together on campus since 2012. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we were just freshly graduated, <laughs> um, no, but, uh, it was, it was so good. It was so perfect. They all have children. So they're of the six of them, ex excluding me, they have 13 children and they all, except for the one that has one daughter, all have a girl and a boy, which is so fun. Like there's just such a, such a good mix. And mm -hmm. the kids, like they vacation without me all the time. Like the kids all know each other. The kids play together. That's and sweet. the kids are all at an age that I really love. Like the youngest one was four. And the most of the, I feel like say the median age is like six, seven. 
The oldest is nine. So it's fun. I just, I loved it. I mean, there was a point where 2015 maybe, and we all got together for a, a baby shower and they all had like babies or really young kids. And I was like, I cannot relate to these people anymore. Like, and I get it. They're all like, they're breastfeeding, they're pregnant or they have newborns or small children. It's like all consuming. And it would be for me too. But I just felt like, I knew that 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 would pass. Like I knew mm-hmm. it would come to a point where like I loved being around their kids and I could talk to their kids and hang out with them and then they would be back to normal, you know, out of that early infancy stage and so it was such a blast. I just I like loved being around the kids. I I think it's really nice because we talk about like friendships ebbing and flowing a lot in the show and people being in different life stages. And I had that life stage when I was like maybe 28, 29 when all my friends started to get pregnant with their first kids. And like the only thing they wanted to talk about was pregnancy and baby formula is what they're going to put their kids in. I just couldn't relate. Like I just had nothing to contribute. And like it's nice to kind of start to be on the other side of that where you like you can hang out again. They can talk to you and not be with their kids. Like I just think it's like a good reminder that like friendships and like life stages ebb and flow and you can like really enjoy it on the other side of it. It just takes a little time. Yes. And none of them are like helicopter parents. They're all just super chill. Mm -hmm. They're all just like, let their kids like run amok. But the kids are all friends. Like the girls, like four of the girls are the same age. Like, I'm like, what if they all grow up and go to Clemson together and room together? Like I just loved watching it. It like really warmed my heart. It made me want to have kids. I'm kidding. It made me want to be an aunt (laughs) so bad. (laughs) As you guys, everyone's like, but no, I'm like so excited to be an aunt when that finally happens and like have the kid energy and just all of that. But Clemson is like truly the best place on earth. I mean, the games now, I mean, they have been for quite some time now with like the team is so good. The games are so hype. There's really nothing like it. There is no more hype college football experience. And I'm so glad I got to be there and experience that. We thought we were going to have terrible weather. The weather sh- like turned out to be perfect. The hurricane mm-hmm. blew through and it was just, it was awesome. I felt really happy for you. I felt really sad for me because it was really cold and really rainy here this weekend. Oh. And I was like, oh, she won. I'm so happy for her. Uh, so yeah, that was my, that was my weekend and go Tigers. <laughs> um, and they won, of course, obviously they did. So I have to read this thing that happened between us last night. What? It made me laugh so hard. (laughs) I just have to keep everybody abreast of this conversation. So I said, I have to show you something. I was talking to so-and-so last night at this dinner. I asked him to send me a pic of his dog. He sent one. He was at home. And I asked you about something that was happening in the room. Okay. um, Because I just needed to understand it. And you wrote, hold on. (laughs) What? You asked for a picture of the dog. I, if you know this show, you know that Raina doesn't want to picture your dog. She hates to get a picture of a dog. She, it's a turn off to her that you even have a dog. Probably. I'm kidding. No, she likes dogs. Allegedly. She's, we're still like unclear. I don't know if she's lying to everybody. I like, I like this dog. No, but you've literally said, I don't want pictures of your dog on this podcast. Run the tape. Yes, I did. Receipts. I did. And it just, it made me, you just know me so well. It just made me laugh so hard because I was going to talk about something completely different. <laughs> different and you were so shocked that I asked for a photo of the dog and it shocked me so much that I had to go back and reread the text to make sure that that is what I had asked for <laughs> I was so I, drunk when he sent me I the made photo. You, doubt, you doubt yourself yeah. I well it made me be like wait did I really ask for this so I went back and checked the receipt that I did in fact ask for a photo of the dog yeah so this makes me think that you really like him <laughs> out of character He's going to turn you around, turn you into a dog person. We'll see. I'm not, not a, again, I'm not, not, I'm a, I'm a Zool dog person, but yeah, we'll see. It just, it made me laugh so hard because <laughs> I just didn't even think that you would like make a thing out of it. It was, you just know me so well. That's an insane thing. Like I'm trying to think of what would be comparable. <sighs> okay. <laughs> let's, <laughs> okay. Let's say I'm telling you about something and I'm like, Raina, I was having sex with this guy and I asked him to call me a dirty whore. <laughs> And then yada, yada, yada. And, and you would have to be like, back up. You did what? Like, it would be so out of character for me that you would stop the presses and have to get more information before commenting on what I was asking you about. Uh, yeah, no, you're right. That's exactly what I would do. I just, it was so out of character. I really did have to like go back and reread like what drunk me was doing. Um, so it really made me laugh. But yeah, that's where we're at. I asked for a photo of a dog. Well, the, I, you were, so you were hungover yesterday. And you were being so funny. I'm the funniest I'm hungover. 
It's not sharp jokes. Like I'm not, I'm, there's no observational humor. I don't know. I might beg to differ because I'll <laughs> tell the other joke. So <laughs> you, I was in this. I just complain funny. That's what I do. But I would not say I see, I'm not, I'm not a sharp observer when I'm hungover. I don't know, Raina. I, I think this is where you thrive. <laughs> Yesterday was the worst day of my life. Well, so I was in the airport lounge in Greenville, South Carolina, uh, Greenville Spartanburg airport, favorite airport. It's it really teeny sharp. tiny. Mm-hmm. It's, so clean, so nice. Everybody's so nice and so Southern. And it's like, nobody's there. It's the smallest airport I've ever flown in and out of. And I fucking love it. It's okay. so easy. You, I mean, can you feel me on this? Like, well, you sent me the photos. It was beautiful. There was a hot guy there. The food looked amazing. It was empty. It was clean. Nobody's there. So we're. I'm in the lounge and they just had like funny seasonal spooky decor. And I, lo- I, I <laughs> we like that. I love spooky decor. My, my brother, <laughs> so my, my brother decorates his house for every holiday, which is adorable. Yeah. And one time one of his friends told him that the aesthetic was spooky coastal and spooky coastal <laughs> is my favorite thing. So every time I see spooky decor, I love it. So there was like, I took a picture of something for you. Oh, this guy. I was trying to figure out. I said he looked kind of short from the back of his head. We couldn't decide. Also, so I, he looked tall for to me at first. Then he looked like my brother who was very short. We made a huge mistake. He was tall and hot and I should have went and sat by him. Mm-hmm. But it was fine and I was wearing no makeup and I looked really tired. So you t- noticed in the corner of the photo, there was some little pumpkins, some little white pumpkins. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, I've got to show you the rest of the dec- decor. The funniest the decor was sitting on top of the food bar and it was like a little wooden tchotchke with some skeletons <laughs> and it said, Bon appetit. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, they got adorable. Some, some, <laughs> some Marshalls. Some goods or Marshalls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. TJ Maxx. And they had some other decor as well, some like fall, fall, Halloween. And I sent it to you and you said, that's what guys say to me right before I suck their dick. <laughs> and was that an original... <laughs> Yeah, it was an original. Of course. They spelled out the word bone. I've never seen it before. <laughs> it was that's because of, why it was funny. It said bone appetite. Because it's the skeleton. Yeah, I know, but okay. I've never seen somebody spell out the word B-O-N-E. Well, because it was a play on I know. Okay. But yeah, yes, it's original. Just not, I, you're saying not, that tr- trigger the joke. Like, and also I was so hungover that it took me a while to remember how they how you spell bone appetite. I was like, is the E for real or not? Like before I said the joke to you. I was like, is this funny? I think it's so funny that someone, you would be about to suck a guy's dick and he would say bon appetit. It's (laughs) so fucking funny. If any guys are listening right now and you know your girlfriend (laughs) or your boyfriend is a girl's got to eat listener. Next time they go down there, they put their hair up, they get ready, just say bon appetit (laughs) and film it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But let us know. I think it's funny to use like our blowjob gel to like squirt all over your dick and yeah. be like bon appetit. Yes. It really made me laugh. And yeah, I was so hungover. I was like, I don't even know if this is funny. I'm still hungover today. This is a two day hangover. Oh my gosh. This is the worst it's ever been. You know that Ashley and I are on our alcohol journey for like years now. We cut back. I don't drink that much. And I definitely don't drink as much as I drank on Saturday night. Holy shit. You know, I will say like, I, I like barely drink now these days. Like I got kind of drunk this one night in August and that before that I hadn't been drunk since February and it was kind of interesting to tailgate all day and I had three drinks I had a high noon earlier in the day I had a beer at the tailgate and I had a glass of red wine at night I just I drank water I just Mm -hmm. didn't I can't last the whole day. We had a whole long day. It was a night game. I don't, I didn't want to do it. And it's fine. Like live your truth. Like I wish I could just drink like I used to and not get hung over and feel fine and look fine the next morning, but that's just not the case. And it makes a travel day even that more miserable. So that was an interesting thing on this alcohol journey for me was like, and my friends don't drink like we used to, too. We're not, like, running around, mm-hmm. taking sh- ripping shots, getting blackout drunk, going into the game, stumbling around. Like, nobody's getting like that. Mm-hmm. All their kids are with them. Like, it's right. it's just different. But I probably drank even the least of everybody. And I just – it's nice to wake up and, like, I went and got a coffee, went and saw my old house on campus. Like, I just – I'm just – done feeling hungover. Well, yeah, I, I, it's funny you brought up how you look. I do look oh really ugly it's, if I have a couple like, drinks in the middle of the day and I keep, I mean, you know me, you've been with me where all of our friends are day drinking and I won't touch it. Cause like, yeah, I, you just bring it as not day drink. I just, I don't, and it's so annoying when people start heckling me, like just have one, just have one. I'm like, it's my body. Leave me alone. Um, and normally people just back off. Of course, if somebody's heckling yeah. you, that's crazy. But, um, I do start to like look really ugly. 
what it does in my face, like what it does under my eyes Mm -hmm. and then my eyes get small and then the under the bags and then it's like I get Botox my forehead. So I already have like a lowered situation. Like (laughs) It's been getting worse where I wake up and I'm like, who is she? Mm -hmm. That alone is enough to deter me as of late. Me too. I woke up. I'm I'm puffy two days later. (sighs) Okay. One more thing that happened that was so funny yesterday. Okay. Okay. So you guys... We've been having to get so many COVID tests and it's fine because it's for like TV appearances and, and various things. So we are, this will have already happened, but to, as, as of today, tomorrow we are recording a Drew Barrymore's podcast. So we're so excited. Whatever. We had to get COVID tested that yeah. all these things still have COVID protocols in, in place. So our PR company said that they could send someone to do it in our home. Like they just come by, they swab you, they mm-hmm. leave. So my flight was delayed. So I was supposed to get swabbed. Then I had to push it back till 6 PM. So the the nurse is like texting me, like I'm swabbing you today. We had to reschedule. We had to go through the company. And so then she texts me, if you're home any earlier, let me know I'm in the area. So I was like, okay. And so it was supposed to be at six. As it turned out, I was like, I'm going to be home at five 30. And she's like, okay. And then she said, I can do it before you even like go in the building. I was like, okay, like I don't, what are you, what? So I it's pull quick. up in the Uber. I have a Zool, I have a suitcase, I have a carry on bag, and she rushes out of her car, catches me on the sidewalk. I have a dog with me and luggage <laughs> and just sticks it in my nose, swabs me, and she's like, sorry about the rush, and runs off, drive by swabbing. 90 seconds in and out. Two hot guys walked by on the street. They're probably like, what is going on here? Right? I've never in my life, I'm, I couldn't even kind of manage all the stuff I had going on with this animal and my luggage and trying to get in the door and the Uber's there. And then she's just like, do, 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 do. That was so funny. You just like stand there. Like, I couldn't recognize that woman in a lot out of a lineup. Like I, <laughs> it happened so quick. She was in and out. She texted me later. Sorry, girl. That was a little weird. I was like, yeah, girl. <laughs> you guys are texting about the experience she, afterwards. She, there was, she didn't give me an option. She came at me with that swab, went in and out of my nose and ran off in her Corolla. That is so funny. You still holding the luggage. I, I told yes! you like 60 seconds. And a dog. I wonder if the doormen were thinking, the people on the street. Like, this is so crazy. I literally, as she swabbed my left nostril, I locked eyes with two hot guys walking by, which we don't see hot guys in the neighborhood that much anymore. The neighborhood has changed. Oh, wait, what did they think? I actually don't know. It sounds like a drug test. (laughs) Like you're going to go pick up your kids or something and they won't let you into the building. Like without doing your drug test, like I got to see if mommy's drunk or on drugs. That's Um, crazy. That would be, I was trying to think like how crazy it would be if I walked by and somebody was doing that on the street. I'd be like, wow, they really got to get it in. And also like, can you let that girl put her stuff down? Like she wasn't willing to let me go in the building and set my stuff down. She was like, I'm in and out. Parking is tough. I got my flashers on. She had her flashers on. I respect this. My girl had her boyfriend drive her to my house. (laughs) Okay. Let's just take a quick break. I am telling you guys about daily harvest. Have my daily harvest smoothie this morning. I I did the strawberry peach this morning. I love the mint and cacao. A couple new smoothies. (laughs) I have been meaning to talk about that. There is a avocado and greens and there is some other, I think, strawberry or cherry situation. I freaked out because there hasn't been a new one in like a minute. I, I think know. the last one was like the banana almond drop. So I am just like so excited. So check out those new smoothies, you guys. They have harvest bowls, soups, flatbread, snacks, smoothies, lattes, and more built on organic fruits and vegetables. They work directly with farmers to source the best of the best ingredients. They freeze the ingredients at peak ripeness to like lock in nutrients and flavor, and they never use artificial preservatives or artificial ingredients. So we love this so much. Um, we love the harvest bakes. They are like a really hearty meal. You can even have some for lunch, have some for dinner. It could be like a dinner for two or dinner just for one. I had a great brunch or breakfast. I had oats and bananas. It was in cinnamon. It was amazing. Okay. Two days ago, it was great. What is the bake we like the most? Um, Um, The chickpea curry bake. Yes. Unbelievable. And it's really substantial in size. Yes. Uh, We we love that one so much. There is a, I love the broccoli rice and dill pilaf harvest bowl. And again, those smoothies are so great. So if you guys aren't familiar with Daily Harvest, you just, with the smoothies at least, you just fill the cup that already has the fruits and veggies and everything in it with your liquid of choice. I usually do an almond milk, throw it in the blender and it's like the the perfect, perfect amount. And I love their almond milk as well. So they have these little pods. They're the perfect amount for your smoothies. They have a regular almond milk and they, I think they have an almond milk with vanilla and I just love those so much. When you're busy, these are, they're just so convenient that you just 
quickly throw the harvest bowls on the stovetop. You can throw those harvest bakes in the microwave if you're Raina or in the oven if you're me. That's how we roll. Raina's just a little more impatient when it comes to this stuff. And of course, we have soups. We love soup season and there's great snacks. We love these little bites that are really a delicious little dessert. So we're such huge fans, such a game changer. I've been having daily harvest for years. I've lost track. It's been literal years every single morning Mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of uh, afternoons and evenings as well. So Daily Harvest is committed to human and planetary health, which means they do their absolute best to ensure transparency and integrity when it comes to their ingredients and the humans who grow them. It's a win-win case in point by supporting farmers who invest in practices that increase biodiversity and improve the health of our soil and by delivering food in recyclable and compostable packaging where possible. Daily Harvest does the work, so all I have to do is eat and enjoy. You deserve one less thing to worry about. Let Daily Harvest take care of the fruits and veggies for you. Go to dailyharvest.com slash GGE to get up to $40 off your first box. That's dailyharvest.com slash GGE for up to $40 off your first box. Dailyharvest.com slash GGE. Yes. And I'm excited about this next partner. It's a new one. And I think it's so useful. So um, if you guys have no idea what you spend on subscriptions and what they really cost, you are in good company like me. Um, most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions when the actual cost is around 200 plus. Um, so you could be wasting $100 each month on subscriptions that you don't even know about. Um, so I'm excited that we found this app. Oh my gosh. <sighs> What a game changer, it, right? I mean, and I'll see like stuff pop up on my like my Amex, my notifications because it, it's linked to my Apple wallet. And I'm like, what is that? All the time. It's the only time I ever do notice it. How, right. <laughs> is what it comes when I check my bank statement or the Apple wallet. Um, so it's called Rocket Money. It is formerly known as Truebill. Um, the app shows you all your subscriptions in one place and then cancels whatever you don't still want. Um, you can even find subscriptions you didn't know you were paying for, which to me is huge. Like, I'm sure there's just things that I don't even know I'm still signed up for because I forget. So Rocket <laughs> Money is going to help you not forget. Um, and if you find out you've been double charged for a subscription. It helps with that as well. To cancel a subscription, all you have to do is press cancel and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. So I have so many subscriptions I don't even think about day to day. So yeah. um, Amazon Prime and Hulu and Spotify now because I use Spotify now. <laughs> <laughs> tons of apps, tons of things that I just don't even remember that I'm paying for. I was double paying for Peloton, one on my television and one through the Peloton. Oh, yeah, yeah. I uh, gotcha. I'm kidding. We love them. <laughs> <laughs> so this just helps you take tra- take care of tracking all these things and it's really practical and easy to use and I'm excited to promote it. And uh, maybe you'll find out about subscriptions you didn't know you had that you would like to start using again. <laughs> like every <laughs> once in a while, like this morning I got my New York Times. I forget that I have that too. See, <laughs> yeah. rocket money. Um, rocket yeah. Money. <laughs> rocket money. <laughs> Get rid of useless subscriptions with Rocket Money now. Go to rocketmoney.com slash GGE. Seriously, it could save you $100 per year. That's rocketmoney.com slash GGE. Cancel your unnecessary subscriptions right now at rocketmoney.com slash GGE. Okay, so this is something that we wanted to talk about inspired by uh, inspired by real life events. <laughs> <laughs> like everything on this show. <laughs> <laughs> so like this, all things we so talk about is, on this show. So guys, this is a true story. <laughs> <is> not fiction. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so and we, it, we I teased it last week. Not like it's some like you know b- b- big deal, Breaking but news. this is something that I had two incidents back to back with guys that ultimately would not take a hint. We're having conversations with themselves in my DMs. One of them was texting me and. One showed up to a show and then one was like, I'm going to show up to your show. And I told him basically that I don't want to date you and uh, you know, don't come. So we'll get to that. But the first guy we hooked up so many years ago, I mean, 10 now, I would think Mm -hmm. like one time I did like him at the time. I I don't know. It just didn't work out. We hooked up a couple of times and like, that was it. And like, just whatever. Crazy long ago. (laughs) So long ago. He doesn't live here. So he lives in another city and we, we go there often. And every time I'm there, he is like in my DMs so hard. Like, can you make some time to meet up with me? It's, it gets insane. It's insane. It's and insane. it's every single time. And every single time. And then outside of those times too, uh-huh. he DMs me, you know, if he'll send me like stuff about the podcast or just whatever and respond to all my stories. Obviously that goes without saying. And then he has texted me before too. He has my number. Uh-huh. I mean, we, we've hooked up. Uh-huh. And I don't really, I'm not threatened at all. Like I, he's a harmless, I mean, I have famous last words, but truly, I truly believe that I, I don't feel scared. I want to be clear. It's just like, 
what it's almost funny like what are you like it's insane the behavior to me is so insane like I do understand a couple messages unanswered like Raina said like do you, you you your quote was I'll do two I would never do three under any circumstances you always get two. I know, I guess there's a world in which guys have been taught, like, just keep persisting. Like, you'll break her down. Bad advice. We, do, we don't want it. And now, I mean, I feel like in 2022, it's aggressive, bad behavior. Yes. I feel like men are trained to, like, hunt and pursue. And they don't have the same, I mean, I can only speak to being a woman, but they don't have the same, like, st- embarrassing things that say like stop no one wants this do not proceed Uh like men it's just like pursue 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 kill eat you know and it's crazy behavior yeah and I'm not trying to blow this out of proportion it's just something that kind of happened twice where they were showing up so this guy showed up to a show uh in in another city and I saw a dm come through that was like when are your shows and I ignored it and I know you guys are just thinking like you just block him. I don't know. I mean, again, some of it's kind of like funny because I'm like, look at this fucking guy. But also blocking I, somebody feels a little also, aggressive. Yeah, and I point. know him. You know what I'm saying? Like we used to be friends kind of. It's just like you, he's crossed the line and it's like, I can't make it any clearer that I'm not interested in this. I'm just like completely ignoring you. And again, I could also just shut him down. But, but it, I feel like I shouldn't too. even have to. But that feels weird too. And like, I hate when you do, I mean, so many women can relate to like, you do address this and shut it down. I can think of this, a friend of ours, there was this guy who, um, he kept responding to all of her Instagram stories and pursuing her. And she did finally say like, hey, I'm not interested. And he like, really was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm just trying to be friends. I just want to be buddies. And all women have gone through that where like someone then turns it around on you. Like you're the crazy person. And that's why women don't say stuff about it because we are all trained Mm -hmm. because men are going to try and be like, you're a bitch or you misinterpreted that or I'm just trying to be friends. And it's like, we just avoid and avoid and placate for so long. And it's like, you don't feel physically threatened. So of course you're not going to take the extra step. But like that situation, she was saying to me for months, he will not stop. He won't stop asking me to hang out. Out. And it's like we avoid these situations because of that. It sucks. Yeah. And thank you for like saying all that. And then he comes to my show and I see, I realize he's at the show because the host crowd worked him. I hear his name. I, I see him. I'm like, oh my God, what? And here's the thing. Yes, there's a world in which he's like, I know her. I used to hang with her. I want to see her comedy. But he's also asking me out in the DMs a million fucking times before he showed up to my show. So I can only assume that he's like just trying to get in there by showing up to where I work. And I think that there is a spectrum of how people might feel about this. There is a, oh my gosh, call the police. That's crazy. That's stalker behavior. And then there's, not a big deal. Relax. It's a comedy show. Anyone can come to a comedy show. And I think that most of us would fall somewhere in between. And I go back and forth on how I feel about this and how intensely I feel about it. I felt uncomfortable. I did my thing. I'm a professional. I wasn't bothered on stage by it, but I left right after and I saw him get up and I don't know what, try to find me or whatever. I let, I like bolted right after. Cause also I just like, wasn't planning on staying for the rest of the show anywhere. I had, anyway, I had somewhere else to be. And then he DM me with, I was at your show again. It's like, I do feel like it's harmless, but I'm just like, dude, this is wild. This, this, it's delusional. Um, it's also like unfair. Cause like anybody else has a job that you can't show up to. Like I used to work at the New York times building. You weren't getting through security. You couldn't show up at my door. It wasn't, you know, like you were blocked from it. It's like, it's unfair that there was like, Oh, I can find her. I'll just buy a ticket. Like, why should you be subjected to that? Cause it's so easy to find you and it really sucks and it makes me feel crazy. And I'm like, I'm with you too. I, I go back and forth. Cause like who says you're being too cautious. If you say you can never be too cautious. If you feel threatened, <laughs> right. You feel threatened and you can tell venue security or whatever you need to do. Well, so the other thing, and I'll, I'll keep this short. There's another guy and I basically, I had never met him. It's really, it's not important. Kind of a mutual friend introduced us, I guess, whatever. We were, we were DMing. He also didn't live here. You know, I can never be interested in someone who lives here. And we were DMing and I just kind of, I was interested for a second and then I just stopped being interested. The communication wasn't doing it for me. Yeah. It felt a little much for someone that had never met me. It felt like, why are you so interested in me? Why are you trying to fly up here? It felt maybe there's a little clout chasing in it. Whatever. I was turned off. So I just stopped responding. He kept going, unanswered messages. Here's my number. I'm coming to New York, yada, yada. I didn't respond. And then I, so maybe three or four unanswered. He's in the DM just talking to himself. And then I saw I'm coming to your show on Thursday. And I didn't like that because I, it was Francis in my show. 
I run that show. It's not a quick set, get in and get out. I just felt a little uncomfortable, but whatever. You can come to the show if you want. It's open to the public. So I actually just asked Jared what he thought Mm -hmm. because he's a comedian too. Jared didn't like it at all. Jared was like, I think you should say, I don't, I'm not interested in this. Please respect my boundary. And I would appreciate you not coming to the show. And then Jared was like, I also would tell the club manager and to show them a picture. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, again, like you said, you can't be too cautious. I didn't feel like this was a dangerous person. Yes. And I, but I also love that Jared took that stance, Me too. you know? So I was like, I am going to say something. The other guy can talk to himself till the end of time in my DMs. But I, I also want to be upfront with this guy and tell him that like, I'm not really interested. And if it goes badly and he calls me a crazy slut, okay. But I'm just going to say it. So I just said like, I got to be honest with you. I, I just don't see us like going on a date or whatever. Like basically in the nicest way possible. I appreciate you. I said, I appreciate you wanting to come to the show, but I just don't really see us going on a date. Mm -hmm. And he goes, that's fine. And that was it. And he didn't come. And so, you know, crisis averted. And I just was like, how is this happening back to back where I feel like I'm sending the message that I'm not interested in? You're showing up. I think so many guys have been like taught hunt, kill, <laughs> go after what you want. And I also think like, like I said before, so see many your of comedy. <laughs> Sit up front. Pay to go sit at her work. <laughs> pay to see her. <laughs> right? You have to pay. You have to pay. You're not lurking in the back. You bought a ticket. It's I mean, crazy it's, to me. it's kind of flattering. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that like this behavior. So all of us don't do this a lot of times because we're so used to being attacked when we do and somebody gaslighting us and making us feel crazy yes. and like we've overreacted or like we've read the situation wrong. And I think that we don't do it because people call us a fucking bitch or a slut or you're overreacting, whatever. I don't care. You can call me whatever you want. That doesn't make me wrong just because that's your version of what's going on in your head does not mean that my version is not correct. And if I feel uncomfortable, I feel uncomfortable. And I think that you can just assume that somebody's going to take it poorly. You're really lucky. The guy was just like, okay, I'll back off. Fine, like a normal reaction. This this other situation with my other girlfriend where the guy got like kind of pissed and made her feel a little crazy. I think the behavior was so crazy and I didn't expect a normal reaction to her saying something it's calm. Sure. And that's but fine you could have seen that coming. Yes, I saw it coming. And so did she. And that's fine too. If the worst thing somebody's gonna say is like, you're fucking crazy. And the- okay. You're what? crazy for behaving like this. <laughs> I'd be like, LOL, you are. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> but I will say, I co-sign everything you say. I do think guys are getting better, whether they're just scared you'll put it on the internet or not. Uh, Whatever the reason is, we'll take it, right? I would like to think that it's just in general, they're getting better about all this stuff. Like that SNL sketch was just like, send a woman a normal DM. Actually, Uh, that is the funniest sketch. (laughs) Miles Teller hosted SNL on Saturday night. Um, And our friend Marcelo is now on the cast. We're so happy for him. Um, But it was... It was a skit like what? Like it's Jeopardy sort of. And it's just like send a woman a normal response to her text. And the texts were like, hey, it's been a while. How are you? And yeah. the one guy's Army Hammer. Was, and, and Adam Levine. And Adam Levine. And who are the other two? The, um, Neil Patrick. No, not Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> like space guy. Um, Tyson. No. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, and then one of the cast members was like, I'm just a gay man. I'm just here. But then he got fucked up too because do it. What? It's fine. Go, go watch it. SNL posts all their sketches in full on their Instagram if you guys are curious. So anyway, it's just further validation that this is still an issue that men don't know appropriate responses to women and all this stuff. But I do think that you're, it's just going to be half and half. And I think that plenty of guys will literally just be like, say less. I got it. And to the women or the men that are dealing with this listening, always feel empowered to say, Hey, I'm flattered, but I'm just not interested. You can say whatever you want, but I do think if you're a little nicer with it, unless you've been threatened or really uh, like, uh, unless they're being super aggressive, but if they've just really just been bugging you, I think, uh, Hey, thanks so much. I'm really flattered. Thanks for wanting to come to the show. Thanks for whatever, but I'm just not interested at this time. Or I just don't see us going on a date. Like whatever it is, like most normal people should be like, got it. We all have those guys in our DMs. We're like, are you good? They're just responding to (laughs) everything. (laughs) 
are you thinking? What are they, you? They respond to every Instagram story. You know who does that to me? But it's funny. It's Bobby Westside. <laughs> responds to he flame emojis ever. But like I'm good friends with this fiance. She knows. But like, Bobby is so funny. Also that like out for every four flame emojis, he's got like a hilarious one liner. So like I just let it happen. <laughs> but we all have that guy in our DMs that's just like responding, responding, flame emojis, something ridiculous. And you're like, are you okay? <laughs> I so I actually encourage you to not leave those okay. people. <laughs> Actually, I, I retract my statement. What we're writing is, are you good? <laughs> Ladies, you go. Find that, guy your, find that guy in your DMs <laughs> and write, are you good? <laughs> Will you guys please do that and then screenshot please the response? If you feel safe, we don't want anybody, you know, getting a bunch of backlash, but oh my gosh. I, so my <laughs> first tactic is that I always leave it on red. I always make sure somebody yes. sees that I read it. Cause I want sometimes I used to just delete, 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 but I want you to know that I saw this and chose to not respond. Cause no response is a response. Get it through yep. your fucking head. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Go off queen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys do that. You have a couple. You have some Rex. Yeah, so you know I've been really like scraping the bottom of the barrel <laughs> to find some Rex. But she recently. still hasn't watched the summer. I turned pretty. <laughs> you, I, right? I it? asked her. You clapped back at me so hard. I was like, I don't know if I'm allowed to text her for the next hour or two. <laughs> Raina said, like, what should I watch? I said, don't you dare fucking ask me what you should watch. And, and then, then we didn't talk for two hours. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm going to let her start the next conversation. So again, if you're new <laughs> At here. At first I was like, maybe I misinterpreted it. Maybe she was like, you've seen everything, girl. You got this. <laughs> if you're new here, Raina has not watched The Summer I Turned Pretty, which is an incredible show. Everybody loves it. Everybody and she it. refuses. You're checking our ticket sales. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Raina's like really engaged in what's happening. Uh, so she hasn't watched it yet. So um Honestly, anything that Rain recommends, don't watch. Just in <laughs> just despite me. Yeah, just despite you. <laughs> that was so funny. I was like, maybe she's like, you got this. You've already seen everything. <laughs> nope. So I've been really scraping the bottom of the barrel. So um, I'm on CNN to find stuff to watch, and I'll tell you about two really good things. So um, Stanley Tucci searching for Italy. Yes. Um, you know Anthony Bourdain and No Reservations used to be like my favorite show about food, and I've never found anything to really replace it. And I really love this show. It's on the second season right now. Um, he just goes around and eats. I think he's like a great host. You I think love he's him. hot? Stanley Tucci? He's well, like he's little. bald and he's bald. He's sexy. You know, I think he's he's married to Emily, who is um, Jim from The Office's wife. Emily, what's her name? She was in Devil Wars Prada. Red hair. Oh, Emily Blunt? Emily Blunt's sister is his wife. Oh, okay. Emily Blunt's <laughs> sister. Got it. <laughs> There's some trivia for you guys. Um, I just, the show is shot beautifully. You and I spent some time in Italy. With, well, I did this summer. Um, and it's a great show. I really enjoyed it. Um, I found it because I was already on CNN. I was watching the Murdoch's Empire of Influence. So um, it is a docu-series about the Murdoch's. If you don't know who the Murdoch's are, um, Rupert Murdoch basically owns so much media and he owns Fox News. Mm -hmm. um, tons of newspapers all over the world. He really controls the media. Um, and awesome. It's, so awesome. It's an interesting you, take. You love it. You love the, um, that family family to just mm -hmm. control the media. So they, they dive into it and I'm they talk about, sarcastic. no, I mean, so obviously <laughs> um, they talk about how they've like influenced elections with the New York yeah. post and with their other um, media outlets and how they've really like swung huge presidential and mayor, mayoral, mayoral elections. I think it's really interesting. Um, uh, it's in the third episode came out last night. And then if you like um, succession, that show is based off of the Murdoch right. extremely closely. So um, it's about like the battle for power of his three children who's going to take over the empire and just really interesting. I, th I thought it was fascinating and a really sad but eye-opening take on how much the media can control basically the news cycle and what you see and what the truth is. And if you're just so obsessed with the Murdochs, you can also watch Bombshell if you haven't watched that yet. Oh, I love that movie so much. I, I saw like it by it myself too. and I cried. So Rain and I saw our first movie together. <laughs> <laughs> we sat in the theater next to each other for the very first time in this friendship, in this five-year friendship. Literally, I don't know what, I don't know what your like theater behavior is. I've never been to a movie theater with well, you. Well, it wasn't a traditional theater 
outing. We went to a movie premiere. Mm-hmm. So we were just there for the outfits and the after party. Yes. Honestly, we we uh, we just wanted to get dressed up and the after party was great. So the movie is Luckiest Girl Alive, which is going to be on Netflix based on the book by Jess Knoll. And so Mila Kunis uh, plays the lead. And we enjoyed it. I put this on my story and I feel the need to also just tell anyone who will listen that it's uh, a trigger warning for rape and uh, violence. You said it. How do you said it so perfectly? Realistic depictions or realistic depictions of a a school shooting. So like a reenactment. I really have not seen that. So I don't know if Netflix is going to do the trigger warning. I I felt that rape that I didn't expect was surprising to me. And then the school shooting. So like actually, actually acting it out Mm -hmm. where where you have a a active shooter in the school. So this is heavy now, but I just want to say how heavy this, this movie is because I do want to recommend it, but it's, if you were triggered by that, I wouldn't watch it or I would be prepared. Rain and I were a little surprised that we didn't know what was coming. And even, I'm just going to say it like I, I, even the book jacket doesn't say it. And I've just found that surprising because of the both of those things together being truly the main themes yes I found it hard to get through I I spent like the entire part of that with like my hand over my face yeah and I think these things they're it's like they're important to to not shield away from because they're happening and they need to be addressed but we should know when they're coming (laughs) as a viewer so uh I, I have mixed feelings on it someone sent me a dm this morning about the trigger warning from last week about tell me lies and she said she has mixed feelings on like how much how there's a lot of this content and the impact and obviously that we do, we can't pretend this stuff isn't happening, but how much is too much and how should it be depicted and how should survivors be shown and all these things. This is kind of a deeper conversation, but uh, this took a turn, but this was Rain and I's first movie together. <laughs> and uh, it was, it was heavy. I think they did a good job though. And the director did a good job and uh, Mila Kunis was, was great in it and it will be on Netflix. And I'm assuming it will probably be pretty popular on Netflix. So we at least just wanted to let you guys know, yeah. to know what to expect. Yeah. Um, and, and it is empowering. Yeah, how it ends is empowering. And it's just, you know, I, I never saw a trigger warning anywhere. We got the press release. I asked another girl that we saw at the premiere, like what she thought, and we she felt the same way. Like this isn't just me and Ashley. So um yeah, just watch with caution. Yeah, watch with caution. Um so we did, we went to this and then we went to the after party and it was cool. It was like all the, you know, the author and the director and the stars that were all there. It was the the girl that plays the teenage Mila Kunis was in um, Cruel Summer, which we <laughs> just love. She's such a great actress. She was there. So we just had fun. And then we kind of moved out of the main area where all the stars were. And we sat in this booth with our friend Ted and Raina ate 18 sliders. It was so good. <laughs> I think about them every day. And they were sir- I've never been to a party like this before. It was so fancy. It was like every five seconds, somebody walked up to us with like a cheeseburger or some pasta or something on a skewer or sushi. It was like every time I turned around, there were tray passing martinis, express. Express- so martinis, like it was fancy. Like it was good. It. They had the carbone spicy rigatoni. I had like two, three of those. But you, Raina, the sliders. <laughs> I was like, she's going in. Again. I had four. It was. So I mean, good. it was our dinner. But I was. It was funny because I was like, when's she gonna tap out? <laughs> I actually tapped out after three and I had a lot of self talk about I was gonna have another one and on the way out the door someone walked by me. Which is fine to treat yourself, but I was just like, she is going in. (laughs) And the guy that we were with, like that's listen, he's hot and we we love him so much, but that's how you know I don't want to date him because I am (laughs) attacking cater waiters for more cheeseburgers in front of him. (laughs) When I want something that's being passed. (laughs) I am laser focused. Yeah, like you can't what, even get her into a conversation. You can't. No, you literally can't. If you, if I see something that, cause it's good, it might be limited. I get into a scarcity mindset. I'm like, <laughs> I am going to chase down a gator waiter. If, if I like, they were passing plates of carbone, spicy rigatoni, arguably the most famous pasta in the world. I was like, I gotta get me some of that. Like I was just like, then they would bring a tray and everybody would grab them. And so I was starting was to panic. To find. It was hard to <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was a fun party we went to. It was fun. First movie together. Yes. Okay. Let's just wrap up our remaining partners and then we'll get into the topic for today for play. I am telling you guys about Tushy. Okay. I could truly not live without my Tushy. Every time I spray my butt, I'm like, I cannot imagine truly without this. I mean, when I'm on the road and the the hotel toilet or wherever doesn't have a Tushy on it. I just don't like it. I'm like, I just feel like I have to wipe more. I mean, I'm not trying to get too graphic with it, but it is such a game changer. 
you guys really need to be treating your buttholes with tushy. You just stop smearing your business around with toilet paper and start washing with water with a Hello Tushy bidet. So this is a super easy bidet attachment. You just stick it on your toilet. It has a little knob that just sprays a stream of fresh water into your butthole, cleans you right up. You can still use toilet paper to blot it if you want. Or you can use these little uh, bamboo towels that Tushy sells, which I absolutely love. Uh, we love partnering with Tushy and we have a deal. Go to hellotushy.com slash GGE to get 10% off plus free shipping. Shipping. Okay. So it attaches to your existing toilet. No electrician or plumber needed it installs in less than eight minutes. It's going to cut down your toilet paper use by 80% saving money and paper waste. They've cleaned over 1 million happy bums. Join them and take care of your business the cleaner way. So you guys can get in there. Again, we mentioned this up top that there is an ottoman to help you poop better and more <laughs> effectively, I guess. There is a toilet brush. There is these uh, little towels that I just love and uh, different colorways. You can really uh, trick out your bathroom. So all kinds of stuff. You guys can go on the website and see these make amazing gifts. We have had so many Girls Got to Eat listeners get this for their boyfriends or their husbands, or their girlfriends, or their dads, anyone that really needs a cleaner butt. No more skid marks on your partner's underwear. It's just unacceptable. We want everyone to have clean butts. Visit hellotushy.com slash GGE to get 10% off plus free shipping right now. Tag us and at hellotushy on social media so we can celebrate your clean butt with you. That's hellotushy.com slash GGE for 10% off. Get those butts ready, guys. Um, if you're doing and, butt stuff again, because listen, we're talking about foreplay today. If you're looking to get into butt stuff, first yeah, step, yes, get a this tushy. is the very first step. Um, and if you are impacted by weakened or thinning hair, you are not alone. Over 30 million women are impacted by this, um, including myself. I've hammered my hair my whole life uh, with hot tools and straightening it constantly. And I have been looking for a solution. That solution um, could be neutral for you. It is clinically shown to improve hair growth and thickness with less shedding through all stages of life, and it supports healthy hair growth from within by targeting five root causes of thinning. So that's stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, and metabolism. Um, the added benefit is that you may also see uh, improvements in other things like overall well-being, restful sleep, less stress, better nails, hair and libido and skin. So who doesn't want to make all those things better? Uh, and then hair growth does take time. So it's not an overnight solution. You will uh, experience thicker, stronger, fasting, growing hair in three to six months. And in a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth. After six months, you can go online, take the hair quiz, you can subscribe, and you'll receive automatic monthly deliveries so you never miss a dose. And we're going to give you guys a discount. So you can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com slash GGE to save $15 off your first month subscription. This is their best offer anywhere and it is only available to US customers for a limited time plus free shipping on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com slash GGE and that is spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash GGE. Okay. Foreplay Four episode, <laughs> everything but sex, kissing episode, all the things. Azul, are you excited? Okay. All right. It's too much. He said, you're too much. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's get into he's it. like, don't foreplay me. Yeah. He's like, please stop it. I mean, I do kiss him on the mouth, obviously. <laughs> That's your foreplay? Have you ever kissed a dog in the mouth? Probably not. I barely want dog pics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get there. You'll get there. Um, I just, I love foreplay and it has... It's taken me like a lot. Like I sometimes just like jump right into sex. Like I've had boyfriends in the past be like, you got to like warm me up a little bit. Like, cause I'm just like slam the dick inside of me and let's get going. Oh, you don't like, you don't do enough foreplay. Sometimes I don't do enough okay. foreplay and I have started to really enjoy it over the years. And it's like you and I've done this show and I think that like I've learned to get more creative. There's so many things I like that fall into the foreplay category. So like, I don't need to get to the like ram your dick inside of me part of it as quickly. Yeah. I mean, a foreplay is so important. It's what gets you ready for sex. I mean, it's what gets you lubricated. It's what gets a penis hard. It's like you wouldn't just stick your lasagna in the oven without preheating it. You gotta know, that like, oven. you got to preheat that oven. I mean, I know some people take longer to preheat than others. Like, I don't know, maybe, maybe you're an air fryer. I think those heat up a little quicker. Like I don't have an air fryer. I'm coming out as someone who doesn't participate in the culture. Uh, but maybe you're an easy bake. Maybe you go, it's quicker to, 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 to heat up. But some of us need a bit of a turkey base, you yeah. know? But I think that for most of the time, when we're ready to have sex, we're always engaging in some sort of foreplay, even if it's before anything physical, sexting earlier in the day or something like that. Like there's, I'm not letting a dick inside me unless I really want it, you know? Like I'm like, we're going to do more of this, but sometimes you're just ready quick. You're like ready to go. 
Um, I like foreplay that starts even like in that morning for the evening. We'll talk about all kinds of stuff like sending nudes and sexting throughout the day. But yeah, I think foreplay doesn't just have to mean like getting fingered before sex. It's getting so fingered. many layers. <laughs> and like, I think especially as we move into relationships that we're in longer, this becomes more and more important because you're not just like ready to go at all times. You got to warm me up a little bit more. And I love this stuff that Ian Kerner has talked about on our show, um, spontaneous desire versus responsive desire. Um, so this is not an original thought but he talks about how spontaneous desire a lot in the beginning of the relationship you just see somebody doing dishes and you're like I gotta I gotta lick that pussy yeah you know you're and like I gotta get in that ass I got to like you, somebody, some, you see someone clean their ass on the tushy you're like I gotta get in there they're going to the bathroom and you're like I gotta lick that clean bottle everything somebody does just like cleaning around the apartment all my examples are cleaning and showering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> you just show up you just exist and I want to suck your dick but as we get into relationships that are longer we need to have responsive desire which means like simmering and percolating desire in somebody which can come in all kinds of forms but like as we stay in relationships longer I just don't I don't want to fuck you every second. So you got to work on it. So let's have a kissing conversation. Okay. I love making out. I love kissing. I love talking about kissing. I want to talk about making the first move because you and I re very recently both like made the first move when it came to the first kiss. So I just want to talk about all this stuff, talk about what we like, talk about what you need to do to be a good kisser. People are listening, want to be a better kisser for their partners, all the things. Yeah. And we have really creative ideas, freaky yes. stuff. We have products for you we guys. Crazy just stories. Crazy stories. So that's what we're going to do today. <laughs> you want to talk about kissing? All right, let's talk about kissing. I want to talk about kissing. Okay. So a couple things. Your lips need to be moisturized. <laughs> you need to be flossing regularly. If you're not flossing regularly, don't be on these streets making out people. You got gnarly food between the back of your teeth. Your breath stinks and you need to stop. I'm going to give you guys a hot tip. Go on Amazon for $25. Get a water pick. I use them all the time. I love it. I, I never floss. I use a water pick. It shoots everything straight through your teeth. It's incredible. And you don't have to remember to buy floss. It's just there. Fill it up with water. You want a bad breath. You don't like I this stand tip. by the floss. <laughs> I, do, I do smell your breath every once in a while. <laughs> well, I have a permanent retainer, so I can't floss. No, you have to use the water pick, you guys. But I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm team floss. Okay. And beard being trimmed. This is really something I need to blow the whistle on is guys that are not appropriately trimming their beards for kissing because I haven't hooked up with as many guys as beards with you, as you, with you, as you have. Exclusively with beards. And a couple times in the past, I've made out with guys that their beards weren't trimmed enough. And I was like, I hate guys with beards. This is too much. It's uncomfortable in my face. Why am I sucking your facial hair? Why is it scratchy? And then- in the, in the last couple of years, I've, I'm thinking of guys that I've hooked up with with beards that I didn't even barely notice, you know, like they're, mm -hmm. it was fully trimmed around their lips. I loved making out with them. I loved kissing them and hooking up with them and them going down to me and all the things. So guys, keep your beards trimmed. I have a hot beard tip. Okay. Yes. Oh yeah. Right. An amazing got a beard tip. Beard tip. Um, Cause Everybody that I hook up with has a beard. I can't remember the last time anybody that had um, no I mean, facial hair got near me. You looked at somebody that was, he was trying. I wouldn't call it a beard. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> he had facial hair. He had a patch. He was trying. Um, or two. <laughs> so I'm giving Justin Bieber. <laughs> People with light colored hair have a harder time. They do. <laughs> they do. Like my brother, like he, every, it's patchy. Um, not, not my brother. But I only hook up with um, facial hair people. So yeah. um, I made out this guy the other night and at first I was like, why does his like breath smell like vanilla? It smells so good. And mm. I like couldn't figure it out. He probably flosses, but keep going. Um, And then I got home <laughs> and I could like still kind of smell him like on my upper lip. And I was like, <laughs> Some girls want to take your sweatshirt. Raina just wants you to linger on her upper lip. <laughs> so this is, it's called Matt. I asked him what it was. Did you buy it? <laughs> this Don't is he off. Like, you know, when you were in high, you know, when you were in high school, you would like buy a guy's cologne. <laughs> this is you now buying this guy. He offered to send it to me so that I could always smell him. Um, Ma it's called Mastro's Beard Butter. Um, hydrate. It's a beard cream. It smells so good. Um, it's just this little, it looks like a can of chew. <laughs> Code GG. And I'm it kidding. smells like vanilla and bourbon. It smelled like really masculine. And it's like, I just, I took a little bit of them home with me. Do you I think that's what guys feel like after they eat your pussy. <laughs> Do 
you think their upper lip smells like no, your pussy for the rest know. of the day? I like, don't. I don't. Are people going around washing their upper lip before they go home? <laughs> no. You just wipe it. Like, just give it a wipe. Okay, well, I gave it a wipe, and I could, I could smell him on me like, like all night little, long. Like my pillow little smelled little like milk him. mustache. <laughs> yeah. I listen. That I'm so funny. Like, I'm just picturing like. It is like your takeaway. You're like you'll, you're like I'll never wash this upper lip again. <laughs> I really didn't want to. I woke up and I could still smell it a little bit. It was so nice. But anyways, I really like it. It also makes your beard feel nice, well, so not scratchy. Yeah, I mean, listen, this is not a men's grooming podcast, but if get you, it for your if man, you're, if you're yeah, yes, gifts, and then if guys are, we know less guys listen to this. Keep your beard moisturized. What are you doing? I know a spiky beard. Yes, like the, those those little products like really go such a long way in um, elevating the experience for the woman when it comes to like making out. So okay, I love kissing though. I'm glad that you wanted to like harp on kissing because I I will like go home. We talked about this before. I will masturbate to a good kissing session. I mean, it nothing. I said this last week too. Like nothing really gets me going more. Like I just don't even know if. I could date a guy that wasn't a good kisser. And we, we can talk about, can you fix someone's kissing style? I think you can to a certain extent, but like if they just don't have the lips for it, like, and they just don't really know what they're doing. I mean, I, I have, I think a couple things, like I think what makes a good kisser is knowing how to start the kiss. When you see a TV kiss, you know, if it's a good kiss, you ever see some TV kisses, like even if you're watching like bachelor in paradise where they just go in mouths wide open, you start with your mouth half open, half open. And you know what else I hate when people just like, mouth closed and they're just like lip to lip like you'd kiss your grandparent like extended no there was a kiss on the um bachelor at last season that they just like held their lips on each other i'm like what is even going here your lips should lock it's called a lip lock you're not just like swirling your tongues around with each other which you can get to that point like, like you get that. to those sloppy kissing you know like yeah. but when you start kissing like i i don't know like i just when people are bad kissers, I'm like, how have we come this far in life? It, you're not in high school anymore or even college. Like you should, no one told you this is bad. I just, I can't, I've never had to tell somebody it was bad. I can't even remember the last time it was like too much saliva or too much tongue or like not enough tongue. Also, I have a huge tongue. It's like part of why I have a lisp, I think. Like when I watch myself talk, I'm like, damn, how's that tongue fit in there? It's a huge tongue too. It's too big for his mouth. Yeah? Yeah. That's what we have in common. <laughs> um, but I, I like an average amount of tongue and only when it's appropriate. And you like match someone's tempo. Like, I'm like, why are you so fast or like too slow? Like, I just feel like you're kind of need to match the tempo that your person you're kissing. Like, I feel like some guys are like, they they think they're just supposed to lick. Like, why are you licking my face? Why are you licking my mouth? Like it's kissing is not licking. People are licking you. Yeah, like, have you ever had a face licker? No. Uh, I mean, that was a like <laughs> a face that, licker. They, 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 Kate and I, I think it was Kate dealt with this face licker when we were like younger. And then <laughs> there was a Sex and the City episode where the guy was just licking all over Charlotte's face. This has never happened to me. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. And you can tell somebody to stop the face assault anytime. Yeah. And like a tongue darter, mm-hmm. like a pointy little tongue. Mm-hmm. I've sent guys home. <laughs> What is your excuse for sending them home? I feel sick. From not your, like from your, your darty little tongue. Oh my, um, so I'm not feeling so well. Or, from your tongue. Or if you're like, if it's, you can say whatever you want, whatever. Like I have an early morning. I mean, sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm really tired. Anything. There's, you, no is no. Bye. <laughs> stop is stop. Also an inappropriate type of kissing at an inappropriate time. There's a time and place for biting, for excessive tongue. It's not in front of my family. <laughs> <laughs> Two. What if somebody's biting your lip in front of your dad? <laughs> when, people, <laughs> when people do too much in front of their family, or even like, well, t- listen, I don't know. I go back and forth on a wedding kiss. Like, I it's my it. day. Oh. I'm doing what I want. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's fine. It's you fine. can't bite my lip at my wedding. It's, Let's, you, if maybe, you look like Courtney Kardashian at your wedding with the kissing, you want full tongue on a wedding kiss? I don't know. I feel like by the time I get to a wedding with somebody, we will have hooked up enough times that we don't need to be like tongue punching each other yeah, at the yeah, wedding. Yeah. Have you had this kiss where it's like, this is usually, it's just when you're like really into somebody. We're almost like, I guess it could be like lust and passion, but really when you're just so enamored with somebody and you're just like mouth to mouth, just like breathing in each other's mouths, like <laughs> slow kissing. It's like, so hot and sexy you're just like obsessed with each other it's like barely kissing but it's so hot you're just like 
giving each other mouth to mouth is how it feels sometimes <laughs> where you're like, we're just hot boxing each other's mouths. Like, we're, are, is this even kissing? But you're so into it. Do you know what I'm saying? Is this like, resonating with anybody? I don't know if it's resonating with me, but I'm sure I've done it. It sounds really sexy and lovey. Or it just, it's just like slow and the mouth to mouth action. It's like not so, it's like almost sometimes it can happen post coital where you're like a little tired. It's like almost lazy kissing, uh-huh. but you're just so in it. I love this. Yeah. I'm a little turned on by it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love a hand on the neck. A guy puts his kissing. hand on your neck when you're making out. Oh my God. Because you know that's going to happen later. Like, I love it. I love a hand in the hair. If a guy gets his fingers in my face, I'm sucking his fingers. You know what sucks for me is I wear hair extensions and Mm. I love hair. I love hands in the back of my hair. And it's just like, I just deal with it. Yeah. Like, I know they could feel the track and I don't even care. It feels so good. I love when someone's like lightly tugging on your hair while you're making out. I'm I'm just like, you're going to make me come so hard when you are inside of me. I'm so excited about this. Yes. That's the thing. It's this preview of what's to come, literally. And start the kiss whenever you want. Kiss somebody else. You should be able to read the room and know if somebody wants you to kiss them. And I okay. don't know any men that have ever gone on a date with a woman and they've reported back, I can't believe she kissed me. Ew. Uh, you have? I mean, I think if a guy is really not into a girl, he doesn't want her to kiss. Like, our friend was just telling us this, that he went out with this girl. He wasn't into her. Uh-huh. And she came in for the kiss, didn't read the room, and he didn't want it at all. I mean, I think... You know, we're all the same when it comes to this. You're not into somebody. You're on a date with them. The last thing you want to do is kiss them. Like, I don't, I think just like women, all men are not just down Mm -hmm. for whatever if they're really not feeling you. I guess I'll walk it back. I think that it's like if you're both feeling each other. Yeah. Well, okay. So you go in for the kiss. I don't think any guy's ever like, I can't believe it. And I want to be in control of this. So let me walk it back. I agree with you. So let's talk about this. I want to talk about women making the first move. Ray and I, and I both did this recently and I've probably done it in the past, but I was out with this guy and we were on the dance floor and I just grabbed him and kissed him. And he reported later that it was so hot. He was, he kept telling me how good a kisser I was. I was like, thank you so much. Like I really need this. You don't get that validation a lot. So he really loved it, but I'm not doing that unless I am 100% certain that they really want me, that they're really into me, that they're probably about to do it within the same moment. Mm -hmm. I just beat them to the punch just by hair. So to me, that's the, that's when I'm doing it. When the kiss is very much on the table, I just do it first. Cause it's like sexy to me and, Mm -hmm. and it's sexy. And you did this recently too. And you were like in an elevator. It's super hot. I talked to him in the elevator. It was amazing. Um, and I was like pretty far away from him in the elevator. I had to take like several steps towards him, Mm -hmm. but he was like leaned up against the wall and like, I knew he wanted it. Yes. Um, I was on a date this past like spring and this guy was just like staring at my lips and I was like, you want to kiss me so bad. And he was like, God, I fucking do. Yeah. Like I thought that I was so like proud of that moment because it was so bold because I like told him he wanted to kiss me and I just, oh, it turned me on so much. Yes. This is when you know someone's hands on your leg, like they're, they're on you. They want you. It's very obvious. And you just take that first step. Also, you can do whatever you want. Make the first move all the time if you want. But for me personally, I'm only doing when I'm really, really feeling it when that sexual energy is high. The the guy that I met at a show and we went back to the bar and then we ended up hooking up in California. I mean, we were just so close and flirty at the bar. And I was like, do you want to go up to my room and make out? That's a line that I use a lot is like, want to go make out. I I say it all the time. Not all the time. I mean, listen, I'm not, I'm out of myself. It's like as my game, but it's like so hot to me. Clearly we did other stuff or there's definitely worlds in which you just make out. But I just think it's like a hot, sexy thing to say. And it sounds kind of like cute and like high school and nostalgic. I don't, it's cute to me. Um, this did not always come naturally to me. Like I, I'm thinking about it because now I'm like, yeah, obviously die. You just kiss somebody. But like there's been so long where I will just like sit into a situation where like, I don't think like we we're talking earlier, like men are trained to like hunt, kill, be like, you know, go out of things. But not all men are sure that like you've consented to this. And sometimes you got to give them like a little leg up to let them know. And I'm thinking about when you and I first met, um, we went on our first trip. It was like, six months after we first met and a couple episodes after we started the podcast. I was in London and I was out on this like group trip and the PR guy and I ended up like staying out late at this hotel. Yeah. And everybody went to bed at like 12 and I really wanted to hook up with him. We were at the hotel we were staying at and like we both both just like, I think didn't know how to make a move on the other person and ended up drinking for like two more hours. And then we're just like, finally I kissed him. Cause like, I couldn't have another drink without like staying, like being alive anymore, you know, but it didn't come naturally to me to like make the first move, especially when you're like, this is more of like a professional situation. Like I was doing like a business deal with him kind of. So I didn't know like what was appropriate. I think he didn't either. So it took me like so many hours and I was like half alive by the time it happened. I, 
love that where if, if you feel like he's just being a little hesitant or being a little shy, just, and you've been so flirty, go in for it. Just do it. It's sexy. I mean, it turned me on and then it turned him on. I was like, this is, and then that's when we were like, we were like, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> Yeah. And if you're not going to fuck that night, like I was like, oh, we I was like, oh, I, do, I do want to fuck this guy. But I was like, I don't want to do it. I shouldn't do it. And a, a good makeout sustains me. Yeah. And I think it lets somebody know that you're going to be good and bad. And you can do a little foreplay without penetration. It's still like very sexy and turns you on. Yeah. I, I think that that we've talked about this. We don't want to be repetitive. We've touched on this on other episodes. Like I think a sexy makeout early on in the relationship with no sex is great. And I think that it really leaves someone wanting more. And of course a guy would prefer to get off as would we, who doesn't want to get off, you know, but they'll, they'll be fine. Yeah, they'll went, be fine. Yeah. Blue balls, whether they're a thing or not, th that's not your problem. I went home and masturbated. You can have a, you can have a blue clit. Like it's <laughs> not, it's it, sometimes you get turned on and you don't finish the act and that's nobody that's, you do what you want to do. It's not an exploding offer. If you yeah. could make out with somebody, you can go fuck them later. Yeah. Um, all right. So we've gone past kissing. Okay. We've one thing, one thing, okay. one thing. If you want someone to kiss you, you're like, I'm not doing this. I, but like, do you have any tips for like, if you're like, I, you really want someone to kiss you, what, what do you do? Besides me saying you really want to kiss me? There is, there is that. I mean, I'm just, I, I am naturally a very flirty person. I find it pretty easy to convey that like I'm into somebody. And I think I do that with my body language. Mm -hmm. I make really good prolonged eye contact. Um, I will bite my lip kind of a lot. I don't even know that I'm doing that. I've had like multiple guys I've been on dates with be like, you like really like kind of like suck on your bottom lip a little bit. Yeah, I, um, love, I love a little lip biting. Yeah. Um, I touch somebody. I like touch their arm yep. or I touch their leg. Like I'm just not, this comes very naturally to me. I don't know that comes naturally to everybody, but like your body language will say it all with like the twinkle in your eye and like licking your lips. I lick my lips a lot too. Mm -hmm. um, and just draw attention to the mouth and prolonged eye contact. So all that stuff is great if you want to do like nonverbal cues. Yes. Drawing attention to your mouth is great. Pop a mint, do a wink. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the touching is like the number one thing, you know, and like mm -hmm. you, you find an excuse to touch their face, you know, tell them they have an eyelash or like make something up. They're not going to know. <laughs> So here's some of my other favorite foreplay. We'll go through some and we'll do some of the stuff that you guys um, recommended. Cause yeah, I think that like sex can get a little boring and you've got to like invent other ways to like touch people. Um, my, and if you're holding back on sex for whatever reason, you just don't want to have it yet, or you mm -hmm. just are not ready to, or you have your boundaries set in place, this mm -hmm. is other stuff. My favorite thing in the world is massage. I love being touched. I love touching somebody else. And I love to like kiss somebody's neck and their ears while I'm doing it. I like to take my shirt and my bra off. They can like feel my tits on their back and like my nipples. I'm, there's no way I'm not having sex with you after this, but um, I think it's so sexy. And I think you can do like one of two ways. Like if you're just obviously like watching a TV program, you can just start massaging somebody. A TV program. A TV program. Like a CNN TV program like I like to watch. Um, no one's going to be like, ew, don't touch me. But I think to make like a night out of it is like really fun too and be like, I plan this thing. It's really fun. And you can like have candles and a massage oil and like an outfit. So um, <laughs> I also have a laundry tip for later. But um, we are releasing this week our Vibes Only Massage Oil. And ah! we are so excited. It's our newest product in our line. It is... Um, um, it's the smell is so great. Just like a really light, sweet scent. Mm -hmm. And it is really, really perfect if you want to just create like a little bit of a date night. And sometimes I think these experiences are so great because like they are like the gift that keeps on giving almost. So like if you give somebody like a really sexy massage as a date night, like you can like masturbate to that long term. You can talk about it. Like I love talking about like what you did to me last night kind of thing. Yeah. And it can be part of your dirty talk for the future as well. So I really like that. Yeah. And the massage oil, we love ours. Obviously it's really silky smooth. It's made with as natural ingredients as we could find. The, the scent, it's a light scent and the flavor is juicy berry. <laughs> so we tested all the flavors. And so you can use this massage oil and then you can lick it. I mean, we don't, it's not meant to be ingested in large quantities. It's not a food product, but it's totally safe to like lick or kiss or anything like that. So you can do it and you can kind of like lick all over and put it where you want. You want to lick it off. You can do all the things. So we love it so much. Again, this isn't just a plug for the massage oil, but we are so excited about the massage oil. And it's so cute to show up on a date night and be like, I got something for us for later. It's, you know, it's great. It's a great gift. And it just gets someone excited. I mean, I love a massage. I mean, I, that guy really tricked me into 
<laughs> with a massage this summer. He promised me a massage. I never got it. But he did show up with the oil, but he it's massaged fine. your pushing. <laughs> we, we did fuck, so it's fine. Uh, but I would have liked the massage, but it's fine. I love it. I think it's so sexy. You don't have to be good at it. It's just, it's, no. but I am good at it. Yeah, and I, I love, and it's like great a guy that has it. big, strong hands. Like that's going to be pretty good. Uh huh. I think it just, it shows forethought. It shows like creativity. It's such a sexy way to edge. Like I love when somebody like massages like around my, why am I like getting all bashful? Cause we're on YouTube. Um, like when you're going like close to penetrating me, but you don't penetrate me. Like I love just like teasing. I think mm -hmm. it's so, so sexy and like can really prolong the experience. And again, it's fun thing, fun to talk about later and masturbate too. Yeah. There's a reason why they're in every dating show that you've ever watched. Right. You know, it's, uh -huh. it's sexy and fun and a great thing to do yeah. as, a, as a couple. Yeah. So you can get that at vibesonly.com. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> We got you covered for date night. I'm, yeah. I'm going to plug other products that aren't ours. Well, I mean, we sell these products because we believe in this stuff and they're so important. Like perfect your hand job and bring a little lube on a date. I've been bringing little travel oh, things queen. of lube. Hand jobs can be really great. No guy has ever complained about a hand job. I mean, I guess I've heard guys say like, I could do it better myself, but if you, you really use pressure, you really stroke it, you really get in there, especially if you use a little bit of lube or your spit or your own juices, whatever. Like I've never heard a guy, I've heard them say like, this was so hot. She gave me a hand job. Anything I got off. creative outside of just normal penetrative sex, I think is great. And you're going to be like the 1% of girls they've been with. And they're like, what did she just bring out? That's crazy. Like imagine showing up to somebody's house with some massage oil. I mean, do it on the first date if you want. But um, I think it's so great to just incorporate something that shocks people a little bit. Shock factor. <laughs> I just, I think that so much foreplay can start so far before you're even like touching private parts. Private parts. Private parts <laughs> during, um, during a TV program. For me, like I... I could start early in the morning. Um, somebody suggested we have a great episode about taking nudes. We'll, we'll direct you guys to those episodes, but um, taking Polaroids of yourself and just dropping them into somebody's like bag. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's so, so sexy. Um, any kind of sexting you can do throughout the day about like what you're going to do to me later, I mm -hmm. think is like so hot. You don't have to have like a full blown sexting thing. I think sometimes people are hesitant to start sexting in the middle of the day because you're like, I didn't sign up for this. I got shit to do. But like just a little bit is like really nice. Like yeah. I can't wait till you come over later to do X, Y, Z to me. Um, Ashley and I have a great sexting episode. Take your dirty talks to the next level. That was in June 13th of 2022. So and we did a nudes episode. Mm -hmm. Send nudes. Sending, sending nudes. Nudes, sending, receiving, and perfecting them. And that was in um, July of 2021. It's uh, July 21st, 2021. Oh, okay. I love foreplay like so much. I love being like touched so much. I mean, I would say that it is definitely a bit of a complaint I've had with some partners that I wanted more of it, you uh -huh. know? And I, partners that really took the time and were like touching all over each other and we're just like rolling around. It's like so hot and sexy and you're just like so much more ready to get it on when you finally get down to it. For me, I'm not usually getting naked with somebody unless I'm planning to have sex with them. It's just it's personally. And that's why I want to start wearing underwear more on dates because I feel like <laughs> a guy takes my pants off and my pussies out. And like, I could have another barrier there yeah. that we could be rolling around totally. when I'm not wearing a shirt and a pussy out. <laughs> Like I, sure I've been like wearing out. a sweater, but he, here's my other sweater. No, I'm kidding. But like I just, I've realized this recently where where you I stop want getting waxes, I want my pants off. <laughs> and your other sweater, I'm a full bush. They're like what? I this has happened a couple times as of late where a guy takes my pants off. I want my pants off. I'm wearing jeans. It's uncomfortable, and then I'm just like pussy out. And it's just a lot. Where I think you can have a good time with your jeans off, you know, <laughs> okay. but I think there's, I think there's something to be said for dry humping. Like I will say that I, I hate to say it. I hate to give this more airtime, but the guy that goes to me, I mean, we had this hottest makeout session on my couch. I mean, I had his finger in my mouth. We were like dry humping. We, Fingers we were, and mouths. Yeah. People don't do it enough. We were all, we, it was so hot. I was so wet. He was rock hard. Like, I, I mean, I get, I'm glad we didn't fuck. I didn't want to, I decided not to in the moment, but also I never heard from him again. So I'm extra glad that we didn't, but I've had more than just that one, but that one sticks out of my mind as just like this really sexy, fully clothed makeout. 
hook up foreplay whatever uh-huh and i think that you can like stop somebody and be like i want to like feel you a little more like this like you don't have to go straight to penetration because i'm always i'm barreling towards the penetration but like to actively stop it and edge somebody a little bit yes. I think is like really really hot um i think other like i you know when we ask people like what kind of foreplay do you do a lot of people are like watch porn i don't actually think that it's most people's inclination to like find a porn and put it on and be like mm-hmm. now we're gonna watch a porn you know yeah. <laughs> so i more lean towards like shows that have like some softcore porn that can kind of like get us going and like mm. tricking you into see like Game of Thrones. I have never watched an episode of Game of Thrones and not um, <laughs> masturbated ever. So any shows like softcore porn, I mean, if you are like confident, ready to go, you're like, I picked a porn category. I picked the porn we're going to watch, throw it on the TV. Great. Good for you. But I don't know. That's like most people's inclination to go straight into that. So like anything which is like sexy themes to like put you in the mood is really great. Um, I love lingerie and I bought this thing the other day. <laughs> what I don't know who I'm gonna wear this for ever but I think it can be weird like I've had these moments where I get home so I know like so drunk and I'm like just wait here for a minute and you're like in the other room for like 10 minutes trying to get this thing on yeah. and it's like that it just comes off right away but yeah. I do think um lingerie can be like really sexy and the idea that you like put it on ahead of time so I found this thing you can wear it out you can wear it out yeah you can wear it out oh, of your okay. clothes because it's pretty tight okay um I found this on, on Victoria's Secret and I thought it was really crazy. Um, and I was like, let me just buy this because there's no way this looks good. Okay. It is shockingly good looking. It is called the Bondage Teddy. Oh my gosh. And it- We'll show you guys this for the YouTube. We'll, yeah. We'll bring it up on the screen. Um, It is shockingly flattering on your body. It's incredible and it hugs your whole body. Oh. So oh, is can, it- is there, is that just straps or is it mesh under it? It's under, it's just, it's just nude. Like there's nothing under Those this, are just straps. But there's underwire here. So okay. it holds your boobs up as like a real bra. And then these, there's straps all around it. This is just like a bondage. It's elastic. Um, this looks and- like you're about to go zip lining. <laughs> it does look like a body harness. <laughs> But if you guys are looking at it, it's called the Bondage Teddy on Victoria's Secret. It comes in black and red. I love it. I bought it. It's like surprisingly um, flattering <laughs> and fits well. Like I, I, I saw it at first and I was like, every part of my body is be sticking out of those holes. But yeah. I loved it and it's crotchless also. So somebody can just. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like, yeah. You could also stick a parachute on it and skydive if you guys are into that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. The thing is crazy looking. It's giving sex swing. It looks like you you are. It looks like you dressed up like a sex swing for Halloween. <laughs> Why did I tell you? I put it on my Instagram story, and I was like, "Who on earth would ever wear this?" And this girl DM'd me, who I guess listens to our show, and she's like, "I gotta tell you, I'm one of the designers of that product." What? at Victoria's Secret and she was like it's actually like really great and then another listener DM me I was like I got something exactly like this and I gotta tell you it looks so good and she sent me a photo of herself in it and I was like this is too far I can't see this and I, then I opened it and she just like looks so great and so I bought it and I love it and I hope for an opportunity to wear okay. it but any kind of lingerie that isn't gonna be like really hard uncomfortable to wear under your clothes and isn't gonna take you forever to put on because sometimes I just get home and I'm like I don't wanna fucking do this a fucking garter belt and shit yeah so this slips perfectly <laughs> under your clothes. And of course, you guys, you can have a vibrator in your panties that your partner controls with the Vibes Only app and the controller's <laughs> free. So just to get the Gigi panty vibe and stick it, not in that, because that doesn't have a crotch, but whatever else, your bodysuit, your panties, I'm going to start trying to wear more underwear. So that's a good, that's a good way to get you going either. Okay. You blew past that. I love the idea of like oh, yeah. being at dinner with like another couple or being on an, oh. an airplane or something and yeah. you can just like control it. And um, yeah, the Gigi panty vibe, like your partner can get in there and control it. That is the hottest thing in the world. Yeah. If if you're um, competitive with like another couple, you can do it at dinner together. <laughs> no, I'm just saying like you go to dinner with another couple and then you're like, oh my God, I was wearing vibrating panties the whole time. That is not what I thought you were going to say. I thought you were going to say that you both go to dinner and both the, you, both the women <laughs> wear the vibrators <laughs> and both the men to compete to see who can get off quicker. Or that. <laughs> Imagine seeing that at a table. Imagine being the server for that table. <laughs> You're like, what's going on? <laughs> You're like, babe, can you order for me? Because I'm about to come. Um, here's my other foreplay, favorite foreplay, um, face masks. So anytime you can blindfold somebody. <laughs> nope. <laughs> did that, did enough of that in 2020, 2021. I'm not wearing a mask. I'm not, I'm anti-mask. <laughs> We put in our time for masks. I'm an eye You're not mask, putting them. I don't care. Mask. I'm not putting them. I'm actually <laughs> triggered. <laughs> that is so funny. I'm like, it's just an eye mask. They're like, I'm not doing it. It's triggering. <laughs> it <laughs> yeah. reminds me of the pandemic. 
<laughs> I said face mask. I meant eye mask. Also, what if I said face mask and I just meant like, you know, like a clay Ski face mask. mask? Yeah. Um, like skincare. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, one of the best blowjobs I ever gave, I just used a sleep mask and I gave it to him and I was like, put your hands behind your um, back. And every time he tried to touch me, I just smacked his hand and I just like sucked his dick while he was blindfolded. And it just, I don't know, any kind of like blind somebody just physically stick them, stick a knife in their eye. No, um, just blindfold them um, is so sexy and they don't know where you're going to touch them next and any type of edging at all is like so, so hot to me. More stories like that in the Vibes Only app. Listen, I'm just going to say, this, this is, is relevant. <laughs> okay, so we asked our listeners on Instagram, what are you into? Foreplay. So I'll kick it off. Oh, here we go. Out at dinner, bar with other people. I just start rubbing him over the pants while having a combo. Here's the thing. <laughs> I don't know that... <laughs> People want to sit there with a hard dick and they <laughs> with their friends and your girlfriends and their dick is hard and they're like making eye contact with the server and they can't get up. Like I have thought about this deeply and I'll do it, but and I'll do it. Well, it's giving wedding crashers to me. Like I'm just thinking yes. of that scene when with Vince Vaughn and what Isla Fisher and yeah. she's doing that. And she's like licking her lips while she's doing it. It's so funny. And her face dad's there. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Listen, if you're into this, fine. Okay. Tongue in the ear. The wet willy. <laughs> uh, no kink shaming, but I don't want a wet willy. I want heavy breathing and like a light flick of the tongue. Yeah. I like, I love any kissing around my like neck area. I'm super sensitive there. I mean, a lot of people are, so I'm not like a special type of body uh, and <laughs> like up, <laughs> up near my earlobes and everything. But I, now I want to do a poll. I really want to oh, know what? because I, nobody wants a full tongue in the ear. It's disgusting. I, obviously people do. She means tongue around the ear. She, she didn't know what she was saying. <laughs> okay. Um, I love this next one. We didn't, this didn't come up, but, um, shower together or take a bath together. I think just like being nude in water together. I mean, Ashley's never not nude in water. <laughs> Ashley can't have sex with somebody without getting into a shower. It's, so I didn't, <laughs> it's not like a weird religious so thing. I, it's crazy. <laughs> I, Raina brought this up and we were going to talk Raina about brought, this. Is crazy. No, we were going to talk about this in the show, but there was a point where what the three, I slept with three guys in a period of time and one we had we were in the shower the other one we were in the hot tub and the shower <laughs> and then the other one we were in the bath <laughs> and i don't even take baths and she <laughs> sent me a photo of them in the bath together I know. <laughs> listen we it share was- everything <laughs> I did. She wasn't nude. It was neck up, you guys. Well, she I was thrilled. Nude, but- I know, but <laughs> it wasn't titties out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It uh, wasn't um, your sweater down. I mean, there. again, again, this is like if you're trying to with like hold back from sex. I don't know that I'd take a shower together, but do, no, this do. this is we've a lot of this is we've already fucked. I'm not throwing an eye mask on somebody. And be yeah, like, yeah, put yeah. your hands behind your head if we haven't fucked yet. Um, but yeah, I like being nude in water and Ashley can't get enough of it. Okay. Okay, listen, this made me laugh so hard flashing each other. It made, like you just run in the room and you just like flash and then you run. I think that's so funny. Or just you're like cooking dinner or and you just like pull a titty, pull a titty out. out. It's like Raina's birthday. Okay. You just unbox one. <laughs> <laughs> um, poking buttholes. What? Is this like going up what? to someone and just... What is that called? What does that mean? It's called... Is it called like being zooked? It's called like something... Oh, it's, oh j- like we're doing the motion now we're on YouTube or how guys like ball sla- like they like card swipe you oh I love a credit card swipe like sexually no like I would do always do, do that you, to you don't a do guy to around the house like I would just slip sit my hand up his butt crack I think it's funny and I would go credit card swipe <laughs> <laughs> And then he was so like, turned on. You I, guys fucked if right I, after. Like, if I, like, I love, like, butts. I love guys with good butts. Like, oh, my gosh. The guy that I, the guy that promised me a massage that I never got, best butt I've, like, ever seen. And I love a guy with, like, a tight ass in a boxer brief, like, a tight boxer brief. Who doesn't? Not a hot take. But if I see it, I see both cheeks. I got to swipe up. You got to get in there. That's Ashley's foreplay. She's like, credit card swipe. <laughs> I'm like, Amex Platinum coming in. I don't care about butts <laughs> at all. I, I, you could just not have a butt and it wouldn't change my life at all like it just didn't exist back there i wouldn't care i honestly i would say most guys have hooked up with have a nice spot I, I i really like it on a guy i love a guy that's caked up <laughs> that guy this summer I, right i've never in my life like i wish i would have gotten a photo when he took his pants off to get into the hot tub i was like holy shit I don't think I've ever noticed like a good butt on somebody. I will tell you, I will notice a bad butt. I did somebody for a long time that just had like a deflated little butt. Like both of the cheeks look like they used to be filled up and somebody just went pop and no. just, they went. No. 
<laughs> and I would take photos of his butt all the time and like laugh about Bring it. it up. Body shaming? Okay. Yeah, I body shame my boyfriend. Whatever. <laughs> Creative. Okay, scheduled sex via code names on each other's social calendar. I love that. I love just sending someone a calendar invite for sex. Uh, Here's let's... something I've never thought of before, and I'm so disappointed in myself, sending a sexy voice memo. I love that. I'm so turned on by it because no one loves phone sex more than me. And like, I don't even have to be interrupted by you while I do it. Like, yeah, I think it's so hot. Also, make sure you tell somebody, please be in private when you open this. Uh Oh, good call. Warning. Good um, call. But I, I love, love, love that idea. I make him close his eyes while I jack him off slowly with lube while telling him sexual stories. Whoever you are, please contact us for the vibes only app. <laughs> Excuse me. She's just making up bedtime stories <laughs> while she jacks this guy off slowly. More information. I used to date somebody who liked to, me to tell him about when I hooked up with women, like like tell, uh-huh. like retell the stories of me fucking girls. Yeah, while I would. Hook I up love with that. Him. I love it. <laughs> she checks him off slowly. I love this. Dry humping, edging shower the whole day, toe sucking, seductive touching. A lot of foot stuff came up. Yeah. He grates my cheese for me shirtless and that does it every time. You know, if that's what you're into, we'll get into some food stuff gone wrong. Um, I like the idea of games. So somebody wrote strip Uno or four play games and they said they suggested Amazon. So I can't suggest any in particular, but any kind of like strip card games, sexual, like tell me a secret, truth or dare, strip mm-hmm. poker, whatever. I'm, I'm really turned on by that idea. I think that's like really fun. Any activity. I, I like this taking off my underwear and slipping it to him at the restaurant during dinner. I mean, if it's like clean, like you know, I like sometimes, that sometimes too. Sometimes I'm trying to be that gross, clean. but like, what if there's you... stuff in it? <laughs> it's your, that's your period dirty underwear. underwear. <laughs> but guys Here's like that. Thing. Ew! I don't, what if there's like a stripe in it, <laughs> <laughs> like a white stripe? <laughs> really? I mean, Amy Schumer wasn't she used to say that her underwear when she took it off looked like she's like it was dragged cr- it through cream, cream cheese. cheese. No, that's um, it was in a movie. Je- um, Jenny. The movie's called Obvious Child. She talks about her underwear looks like she dipped into a vat of cream cheese. Um, Jenny Slate? Yes. Okay. Um, I mean, okay. it might be an issue with jokes. So she did that for Chris. <laughs> there's parallel thought. Um, but yeah, maybe just like a backup pair of undies that you just like wafted around your vagina. But maybe. <laughs> 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 so funny. That is so, so funny. If you brought a backup pair of underwear to the restaurant, so you slipped it in his pocket or wherever, and then you get home and he takes off your underwear and he's like, wait, I thought you I thought you had given me your underwear. And you're like, oh, that was like and then you're busted. I think it shows you care. <laughs> Okay, so this is for nights where we're not going to get naked with somebody. It's so true. If you give somebody the backup pair, you got to remember you, to take yeah, off the can original. You imagine. Pair. I am picturing myself doing this, which is hard to picture because I don't wear underwear. But I am picture myself doing this, bringing the backup pair, slipping it to him at dinner, all sexy, and then we get home and he's starting to take off my pants. And I'm like, oh my god! I'm like, oh fuck! I, I fu- I'm gonna float an idea. I don't think any man would even notice. I know. I it's feel so like true. 95% of men would be like, it wouldn't even cross their mind that you gave them underwear <laughs> earlier and you're still <laughs> wearing underwear. <laughs> I don't think it would come up. Or if, if it did, they'd just be like, that's crazy. <laughs> they wouldn't be like, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> I need an explanation. Women would be like, where'd you get this underwear? Where did this go before me? Oh, you're just out shopping for underwear to just stick in pockets. Yeah, but it's different with men. Like, he hands you boxers at dinner. What if you're at dinner? What if you're at dinner? You're like sitting at, at Hillstone and you're <laughs> And then you're like, and you're like, what am I supposed to do with this? This won't even fit. I brought a clutch tonight. <laughs> You have to like ball it up in the, in the napkin and get rid of it. <laughs> a pair of like real life boxers. I, you're like, what am I gonna do I with this? Just, like, throw it out. Skin, skin marks, hundred <laughs> percent. You took this off and walked through a restaurant with this in your hand. <laughs> Okay. I can't breathe. I have literally 
thinking of like, I'd try to be sexy slipping me as boxers. I'd be like, ew. Stop. It smells like ball sweat. There's a skid mark. I'd be like, I'm throwing these out, babe. You give them to the server. You're like, can you just toss these? <laughs> what if you like live with the person? And you're like, well, I just got to take these home for you. <laughs> what am I going to do like, with these? You want me to put these in my YSL? <laughs> But there's food here. I'm just gonna sit at the table with my shrimp cocktail and your boxers. <gasps> oh my god. Okay. On that note, let's do the stories. Okay. Okay. So we got some stories for Play Gone Wrong. We're just gonna go through these. We picked three of our favorites, our top three. Okay. So she says, before I had any real understanding of foreplay, I'd heard about putting food on dicks for blowjobs, whipped cream, pudding, etc. <laughs> You got to get our blowjob gel. It's really the only thing we can recommend. And she says, I decided to employ the sexy tactic with peanut butter. (laughs) I slathered about five tablespoons of organic Adams PB on his D before starting in on quote unquote mission impossible. I'm no physicist, but even at 19, I should have had the foresight to understand peanut butter is literally the opposite of a lubricant. I could not speak, swallow, or even feel him through the nutty dong sarcophagus <laughs> of my own creation. I didn't want to admit I was wrong, so I kept trying to choke it down through my teary eyes. FYI, my eyes were the only part of my body that was wet at this point until he said this needs to end. Skull emoji. After multiple showers, his dick still smelled like peanuts and I had cotton mouth for days. Oh my God. Cannot recommend, can't recommend not using nut butters and foreplay enough. And thank you for doing the Lord's work with the blow gel. Just please never make a peanut butter flavor. Hashtag trauma. Oh. <laughs> this is so funny. I, I can't even begin. Like, I feel like I feel this. I feel like you, you hear that stuff when you're young of like, whipped cream and and hot fudge and uh-huh. you're just like peanut butter it's like a that is crazy it's like sawdust in your mouth but like you do hear all these myths of like food which like by the way i never want it's messy it gets everywhere it's disgusting yeah. it doesn't improve my experience at all um but peanut butter girl there was nothing else there and organic you know that's like even worse Actually you got thick. some smuckers <laughs> crazy richies like that's that true thick. Uh-huh. Like, it's not even like some light whipped peter pan Right, it's like the thicky, thick stuff. She had to like, do, she had to stir it first with the oil. <laughs> <laughs> right, because the oil separates out of the good stuff. Oh my god, that is oh disgusting, god. girl. Your email was so funny. Also, I, know, I love I the way our um, listeners write these emails. Um, okay, next story. Dory foreplay with a guy I've been hooking up with for about a month. Something fell out of his mouth while we were making out. It was dark, and I reached out and felt something. He didn't stop right away, so I was able to feel gaps between his teeth. Evidently, he wore some partial denture retainer thing and it had fallen out. He was a former MMA fighter, so it made sense, but neither of us addressed it. And he just popped that bad boy back in and continued to take me to O-Town. What if someone's tooth fell out while you were having sex? We've heard this. We heard this last year's holiday live show or we heard this at a live show before of the tooth falling out. Okay. We've heard this before. I feel like this happens. I, I mean, I have veneers. I understand. But like, I, I mean, my veneers aren't falling out, but like, yeah, MMA fighters. I mean, listen, that guy sounds like he's a good body. Yeah. So whatever. It's a tooth. Um, honestly, I think it'd be nice if they could take all their teeth out. I mean, like nice for like uh, somebody going down on you. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> the last one. She says, foreplay gone wrong or is this weird? Okay. So I was talking to this guy years ago when we were making out and all of a sudden, this is on brand, making out, and all of a sudden he blew into my mouth and made my cheeks blow up and everything. <laughs> <laughs> he blew you up like a blowfish. I was I was in shock. I stopped and said, what the fuck was that? And he played it off like it was normal. Please tell me that is not a normal thing because this has never happened to me before. Can you imagine? And you're just like, <laughs> I don't blowing your much, cheeks up I like don't a balloon. I breath in my mouth like that. That is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather have someone spit in your mouth or blow your cheeks up? Spit in my mouth all day long. And like, do you pause to acknowledge it? Like, this is crazy. <laughs> just a picture and you're like, you know, but listen, if you're into that, not weird. Just if you're like blow my mouth, can you, that's so funny. That's your dirty talk. Blow my mouth. That's up. your kink. Do you want to be blown up like a blowfish? <laughs> you say blowfish. I say balloon. Um, I mean, nothing's weird if that's what you're into. Yeah. You know, I'm into some weird stuff. Okay. Well, that is about it. Uh, I hope you guys liked our first full YouTube episode. Um, this will be every single week from now on. Yeah. We're doing it. Azul. <laughs> What do you think? You were so good. Okay, okay. Say bye.
Say bye. Uh, you guys can find our product line, including the brand new massage oil and the blow gels and the lubes and the products. We have new products coming soon at vibesonly.com. And you can download the app, Vibes Only app for iPhone and for Android and follow along at Vibes Only on Instagram, girlsgotteatpodcast.com, girlsgotteatpodcast on Instagram. I am Ash Hess on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Raina is Raina.Greenberg, girls underscore gotta eat on Twitter and youtube.com slash girls gotta eat. <laughs> We're back. We're everywhere, baby. All right. Have, Have a good week, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.